جز نمبر 27 ورس نمبر 31 سورة الذاريات قال إبراهيم عليه السلام said to his guests فما خطبكم so what is your situation meaning what is the real reason why you're here أيها المرسلون O oh you who have been sent because they said we have been sent It's the angels. The angels don't just come themselves. They come when Allah sends them. So Ibrahim a.s. knew that they wouldn't just come to give him the good news. There is another reason. So he asked them, what is that reason? قَالُوا They said, إِنَّا أُرْسِلْنَا Indeed, we have been sent إِلَىٰ قَوْمٍ مُجْرِمِينَ To a criminal people. Which criminal people? The people of Lut a.s. لِنُرْسِلَ عَلَيْهِمْ In order that we send on them, meaning we upon them, حِجَارَةً Stones of مِنْطِينٍ of clay. Meaning we are to bring a shower of clay stones upon them. Why? As their punishment. Remember Lut a.s. was one of two people that believed in Ibrahim a.s. He was his nephew also. And when Ibrahim a.s. left his people, he settled in Asham, and Lut a.s. was also made a prophet, and he was sent to the cities of Suddum for the purpose of da'wah. And he was there, he did da'wah for a long time, he stopped his people from their crimes for a very long time, and what happened here? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finally sent punishment upon them. And he sent it through angels. So here, The angels were sent on a double mission. First, to give good news to Ibrahim a.s. And secondly, to bring punishment to who? The people of Lut a.s. And this is how this life is. At one point, one person is being given rizq. And another person is being deprived of rizq. لِنُرْسِلَ عَلَيْهِمْ حِجَارَةً بِنْطِينَ And these stones are مُسَوَّمَةً They are marked. Wow, seen meme is the root. Yes, the order in the word that we see is seen wow meme, but the original root is wow seen meme, wasm. And wasm is to put a mark on something. Musawama is that which is marked. Why is something marked? To make it distinct and to set it aside for a particular purpose. So musawamatan marked. Why? Because these rocks were especially made for this punishment. And musawama marked as in made distinct for the person whom they were to hit. In the Rabbik near your Lord, lil musrifin for the transgressors. فَأَخْرَجُنَا So we brought out, meaning from that city, مَنْ كَانَ فِيهَا Whoever was in it, من المؤمنين of the believers. Meaning any person who had iman was taken out of that city before the punishment was sent. Allah says, فَمَا سُنَاتْ وَجَدْنَا We found fiha in it. In that city, we did not find غَيْرَ بَيْتٍ Except one house. غَيْرَ Other than بَيْتٍ House. Meaning only a single house من المسلمين of the Muslims. Before the punishment was to arrive, all those who have iman were to be taken out. And Allah says there was only a single house of Muslims. Notice mu'mineen is mentioned and then muslimin. Right? Because this was only one family that had iman inside and Islam outside also. The family of Lut a.s. They were people of iman and Islam. Faith inside and outwardly submitted to Allah. And of course his wife was excluded from this. وَتَرَكْنَا فِيهَا And the punishment came upon them. وَتَرَكْنَا فِيهَا And we left فِيهَا in it, meaning therein, in that place where these people used to live. آيَةً A sign. For who? لِلَّذِينَ يَخَافُونَ For those people who fear الْعَذَابَ الْأَلِيمِ The painful punishment. For those who fear punishment. There is a huge lesson, a huge sign. In these people, in this nation that was punished. What is that sign? What is that lesson? That leave your sins and stop justifying them. Because this is what these people did. They justified their crimes. They were warned repeatedly. But they didn't pay any heed. And eventually, they saw the consequences. So, وَتَرَكْنَا فِيهَا آيَةً 
There is a sign in it. لِلَّذِينَ يَخَافُونَ الْعَذَابَ الْأَلِيمِ وَفِي مُوسَى And also in the story of Musa, meaning there is a sign. إِذْ أَرْسَلْنَاهُ When we sent him إِلَى فِرْعَوْنَ To Fir'aun بِسُلْطَانٍ مُبِينٍ With clear proof. Musa a.s. was sent to Fir'aun with clear proof. But what did Fir'aun do? فَتَوَلَّى He turned away بِرُكْنِهِ With his supporters. رُكْن رَا كَافْنُونَ Rukn is used for a pillar and also side, side or corner of something. Alright? Like Ruknul Yamani, one of the corners of the Kaaba. Alright? Rukn, corner. So, Rukn is used for a side of something that is taken as a support. Alright? And the word Rukn also applies to a pillar or something that is taken as a support. So, Fir'aun turned away, meaning from Musa alayhi salam's message, Why? Because of his rukun. What was his rukun? What is it that supported Fir'aun? It was his kingship. It was his people. It was his wealth. It was his position. He was fooled because of it. And he turned away from the truth with it. وَقَالَ And he said, سَاحِرٌ A magician, أو مجنون, or a madman. This is what he called Musa alayhi salam. That either he's a magician or he's a madman. This is the qawl mukhtalif Now how could a person be a magician and a madman at the same time? Performing magic requires a, a lot of intelligence. A lot of intelligence. You know, skill and focus and practice. and Because magic, most of it is just illusions. Right? I watched this documentary, Beyond Magic or something. You've seen it? I watched it on a plane. Couldn't study. Because of the noise and the kids, I'm like, might as well do something. And in that, they were saying that magic is basically applied psychology. Right? That you see how you want to amaze your audience. What emotion you want to create in them. And then you work backwards. Right? Very complicated. Don't know exactly how it works. I couldn't figure it out. But this is what they said, which really struck me. That a lot of magic is just illusion. And for that, there's a lot of hard work that goes into it. Practice, right? Firstly, how you want to trick the other person, and then practice, and hard work, and then research, and working with different types of people to make a trick work. There's a whole lot that goes into practicing magic. And Fir'aun says, either he's a magician or he's a crazy person. Now, crazy person and magician cannot be one. It's not possible. This is the qawlum mukhtalif. You see, he contradicted himself. The people of Makkah were the same. Allah says, فَأَخَذْنَاهُ So we seized him. وَجُنُودَهُ And his soldiers. فَنَبَذْنَاهُمْ And we hurled them, we threw them. فِالْيَمِّ Into the sea. وَهُوَ Mulim, And he was blameworthy. Mulim لَامْ وَاوْمِيم Mulim is someone who's deserving of لَوْم. Guilty. وَهُوَ Mulim. It was his fault. Fir'aun's fault. وَفِي عَادٍ And also in عَاد Meaning is a sign إِذْ أَرْسَلْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ When we sent against them الْرِيحَ الْعَقِيمِ The wind that was عَقِيم عَقِيم Barren عَيْن قَافْ ميم. Dry and devastating Wind generally When it blows What does it bring? Some benefit If nothing You know the breeze itself is comforting Even if it's extremely hot Right? And there's a bit of a breeze. That itself is comforting. There's some khair in it. Right? When wind blows, there's pollination, there's rain or something. Here, Allah says it was rih al aqim. Why? Because that wind brought no benefit. It was dry, it was devastating. Ma tadaru. Ma not. Tadaru. It leaves. Min shay'in anything. أَتَتْ عَلَيْهِ It came upon. Meaning there is nothing that that wind came upon إِلَّا except that the tadru, even the word is coming before in the ayah. Alright? That except that جَعَلَتُ It left it, it made it as كَالرَّمِيم Like disintegrated ruins. رَمِيم رَمِيم ميم. We have done this word earlier in Surah Yasin also. And Ramim refers to basically rotten bones. Bones that are old, decayed, disintegrating, falling apart, 
This is ramim. Ramim is also used for broken bits of dry leaves. So there is nothing that that wind came upon except that it left it as, it made it as disintegrated ruins. وَفِي ثَمُودَ And also in Samud, meaning there is a sign. إِذْ قِيلَ لَهُمْ When it was said to them, تَمَتَّعُوا Enjoy yourselves. حَتَّى حين For a time. The people of Thamud, remember, they demanded a specific miracle from their Prophet. And what was that miracle? Of a she-camel, of a certain size, certain type that should come out of a certain place. And Salih alayhi salam made dua and the exact miracle happened. And these people were warned that do not bother the camel. Forget about bothering it, they killed it. Right? And when they killed it, they were given a warning by their Prophet. You have three days. Three days. If you repent, good. If you don't, then see the consequences. So, إِذْ قِيلَ لَهُمْ تَمَتَّعُوا حَتَّى حين, This is referring to the three days that they were given. In Surah Hud, Ayah 65, we learn, فَعَقَرُوهَا فَقَالَ تَمَتَّعُوا فِي دَارِكُمْ ثَلَاثَةَ أَيَّامِ فَعَتَوْا عَنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّهِمْ Even though they were given a warning. Three days. You know, this is a very exact amount of time. What did they do? عَتَوْا they turned defiant. Atau ain tawa utu is basically such extreme arrogance that a person doesn't care. He turns defiant. Atau an amri rabbihim. They were insolent toward the command of their Lord. They didn't care. That three days, we don't care. We don't believe you. They didn't listen. فَأَخَذَتْهُمُ الصَّاعِقَةُ So the thunderbolt seized them. وَهُمْ يَنْظُرُونَ While they were looking. The punishment came as they were looking. They saw it approaching with their own eyes. And as they saw it approaching, they couldn't do anything to defend themselves, to help themselves. And that's exactly what's mentioned. فَمَا اسْتَطَاعُوا So they were not able, they were not capable, they had no strength, they were unable to min qiyamin. Any standing. What does qiyam mean? To stand up, to rise up. They were not even able to rise up as the punishment approached them. Because you see, when there's you know, some danger approaching you, what do you do? Do you sit there and freeze? Typically, people, what would they do? The fight or flight kicks in, right? So get up and do something. What happened here? فَمَا اسْتَطَاعُوا مِنْ قِيَامٍ They were not even able to get up. Why? Because they didn't have the time. It came so suddenly and so quickly. They couldn't even stand up. وَمَا كَانُوا مُنْتَصِرِينَ And they could not defend themselves. Meaning they could not escape that punishment despite their worldly prosperity that they boasted about. وَقَوْمَ نُوحٍ مِنْ قَبْلُ And also, meaning there is a sign in the people of Nuh, مِنْ قَبْلُ Before. Meaning they came before all of these nations that are mentioned over here. إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا قَوْمًا فَاسِقِينَ Indeed, they were a people who were fasiqeen, who were defiantly disobedient. Because Nuh a.s. warned them for over 900 years. But they didn't pay heed. وَالسَّمَاءَ And the sky. Allah says, بَنَيْنَاهَا We have built it. We have constructed it. بِأَيْدٍ With strength. Aid means hand and also strength. Ayada Strengthen. Right? So we have built the sky with strength. Meaning very strong. وَإِنَّا لَمُوسِعُونَ And indeed we are surely expanders. Musi'un, plural of the word, Musir. Who is Musir? One who expands. Meaning we are expanding it, ever growing it, increasing it in its size. We have expanded it and we continue to do so. وَالْأَرْضَ And the earth, فَرَشْنَاهَا We have spread it out. فَرَشْنَا فَرَاشِين And فِرَاش, we have done this word earlier. The one who has made the earth as a فِرَاش. And فَرَشْنَا is basically to put a floor. Right? To put a floor. And also to level the ground in order to prepare it. Pave it out. Also the word is used for spreading out bedding. Meaning something that a person is going to rest on, sleep on, you spread it out. But when you spread it out, what do you do? You also make it smooth. Alright? So, farashnaha, we have spread it out. فَنِعْمَ الْمَاهِدُونَ How excellent al-mahidun. 
those who prepare. Notice plural is being used over here for the purpose of royalty. Mahidun, plural of mahid, mahid from mahd. What is mahd? Cradle or bed. And mahid is one who prepares the mahd. One who prepares the bed or the cradle. So, وَالْأَرْضَ فَرَشْنَاهَا فَنِعْمَ الْمَاهِدُونَ The earth, we have made it level. And how beautifully we have prepared it for you. So you can live upon it comfortably, with ease. فَرَشْنَاهَا gives a sense of that it's made vast, huge. And mahidun gives a sense of that it's made comfortable, livable. وَمِن كُلِّ شَيْءٍ And of all things خَلَقْنَا We have created زَوْجَيْنِ Two mates. Everything has been created how? In pairs. And we have read this earlier, that how there's different pairs in different types of creation. In some creation it's male and female. In other creatures it is one of a part, meaning one that complements the other, completes the other. وَمِن كُلِّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقْنَا زَوْجَيْنِ why? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ So that you remember. What do you remember? That you are needy. You are incomplete. You see? Why do people get married? Why? It's a question. Why? For many people, because you're supposed to. Right? I mean, that's what's supposed to be done. You grow up at a certain age, you get married. But there is a sense of completion that comes with marriage. I'm not saying that a person is incomplete and they're a loser if they're not married. No, that's not the meaning. All right? The point is that as human beings, we feel incomplete until there is love, until there is a relationship. Right? So, zawjain, in everything, what does it mean? The creation has been created weak and needy. Isn't it? No matter what creation you look at, it's dependent on something else. Even things that we make, like for example a phone, it's useless if it doesn't have battery. Isn't it? And even if it's fully charged, if it doesn't have a SIM, a working SIM, again it's useless. And if it has a working SIM and full battery, but you happen to be in a place where you don't get signal, then what? Again, that's useless. So we see how... Everything in this world is dependent on something else. Isn't it? And we as human beings are most dependent, so needy in so many ways. You know, once a man asked the Prophet ﷺ that if I find a lost camel somewhere, can I just take it? Like with somebody's camel, they lost it and I find it, can I just take it? He said, what do you have to do with it? It has its water. It has its food. It can, you know, take care of itself. You don't need to go take it. But I was thinking if there's a lost human child, can that child be left? No, because it's so needy. Isn't it? This is how we human beings are. We have so many needs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَفِرُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ So run, run to who? إِلَى اللَّهِ to Allah. Flee to Allah. Firru. Firar is to run. Firar is basically direct one's face towards someone, away from something else. Right? Meaning you're deliberately ignoring something, you're facing someone, and then the one whom you're facing, you just run towards them. This is firar. And firar is also to run from something that you're scared of. You're afraid. You need help. You need protection. This is why you run to someone. From the same root is the word mafar. And mafar is refuge, a place of shelter. So, fafirru ila Allah. Run to Allah. You're needy. No matter what need you have, go to who? Allah for its fulfillment. And what happens? We find ourselves needy. We have the sense of you know that something's missing and we try to fill that void with what? With food, right? Or with some company or with some entertainment, right? I'm not saying these things are not good. They have their place. But remember that true fulfillment will only come with the worship of Allah. It will only come by running to Allah. That is when you will feel satisfied. 
Seriously. You could have the best meal followed by the best dessert in the best company. But what happens? In the most fanciest of restaurants even, you see people sitting and looking around. But what else can I take in? What else can I take in? Even in the most fanciest of malls, you know, you see greed in people. This is human nature. This is the reality of this world. It is never meant to bring you full satisfaction and contentment. It can never fill that void. It cannot. Because we weren't built for it. We weren't made for it. So, فَفِرُّوا إِلَى Allah. Run to Allah. That will bring you, you know, a sense of completion, a sense of joy, a sense of fulfillment that cannot come with anything else. And notice how in the previous verses, different nations were mentioned and their outcomes were mentioned. Right? So take a lesson from all of these incidents. Leave your sin and pay attention to your Lord. Run to Him. The Prophet ﷺ said that Allah the Exalted says, O son of Adam, get up for me and I will walk to you. Walk towards me and I will rush to you. So fafirru ilallah. Inni lakum minhu nadirun mubeen. Indeed, I am to you from him, from Allah, a plain warner, a clear warner. This is the Prophet ﷺ that he was supposed to say this to the people. Firru ila Allah, run to Allah. Wala tajalu and do not make ma'allahi with Allah ilahan akhar another deity. Do not associate partners with Allah. Inni lakum minhu nadirum mubin. Indeed, I am to you from Him, from Allah, a, a clear warner. Kadalika, similarly, ma ata, ma not, ata he came. Alladina min qablihim to those before them. Before who? Before the people of Mecca. Mir Rasulin any messenger, meaning no messenger came to a nation before, illa except, qalu they said, meaning that nation said, sahirun aw majnoon. That nation said to their prophet that he was either a magician or a madman. Because this is exactly what the mushrikeen said to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also. What was his message? Run to Allah. What did the people accuse him of? You're a magician or a mad person? Allah says, أَتَوَاصَوْ بِهِ A did. تَوَاصَوْ They suggest each other. They advise each other. They enjoin each other. Bihi of it. Of what? Of this accusation that the messenger of Allah is either a sahir or majnoon. Did they tell each other? تَوَاصَوْ From wasiyah. What does wasiyah mean? To give an advice to somebody with a lot of emphasis. Enjoin. And tawasi is to enjoin each other. Then why is it that every nation hurled the same accusation to their prophet? Did they advise each other? Did each generation tell the following generation that make sure if a man comes to you saying this, this is what you should accuse him of? Like what's going on? Bal rather, whom they are, qawmun ta'oon, a transgressing people. They are a transgressing people. They have wronged their prophet. They have overstepped their bounds, which is why they accused their prophet in this way. The prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is advised here, fatawalla anhum. So just turn away from them. They hurl false accusations at you. Don't pay attention. Just turn away. Ignore. And if you do so, fama anta bi malum. You are not at all blameworthy. Malum from laum. Laum is to blame someone. Malum is one who is blameworthy, meaning you won't be condemned. For turning away from these people. وَذَكِّرْ And remind. Remind. We think in the Qur'an, you know, if the Prophet ﷺ is advised, turn away from these people, that means stop telling them. Right? That's not what it means. What it means is, don't argue with them. Ignore the false accusations they hurl at you. However, keep reminding. Keep conveying. Why? Because فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَى Because indeed the reminder تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ It benefits the believers. So they should not be deprived just because some people don't want to listen. You understand? Because sometimes what happens is we're doing something good. And we don't really get a positive response. We get frustrated and then we give up. When we give up, what are we doing? What are we doing? We're depriving those who are still needy. Right? So, over here, the Prophet ﷺ is advised, ignore 
the falsehood that they accuse you of. However, keep doing your work, keep reminding, because reminder benefits the believers. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ الْمُؤْمِنَ خُلِقَ مُفْتَنًا تَوَّابًا نَسَّاءً إِذَا ذُكِّرَ ذَكَرًا That the believer has been created, how? مُفْتَنًا He faces a lot of difficulties, a lot of tests. تَوَّابًا He repents frequently. نَسَّاءً He forgets a lot. He forgets a lot. Well, the first time I read this hadith, I'm like, is that it? You know, is there an, a mistake here? You know, did the person who wrote it, did they make a mistake? Then I listened to an audio to make sure that I understood correctly and double checked. Yes, this is exactly what the Prophet wasallam said. That the believer is nasa, he forgets. But, إِذَا ذُكِّرَ ذَكَرَ When he's reminded, he takes a lesson. This is what sets a believer apart. He's a human being. He will make mistakes. He will forget a lot. But when he is reminded, then he takes a lesson. He pays attention. And then he corrects himself. Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ I have not created the jinn and men إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونِي except that they should worship me. This is the purpose of our creation. To worship Allah. We weren't created to serve this dunya. We weren't created to collect this dunya. No matter what we do here, will eventually be taken away. This is the reality of this world. Either we will leave it or it will leave us. The purpose of our existence is to worship Allah, not to worship our houses. And we need to see how much of our time and how much of our lives are dedicated to Allah and how much of it is dedicated to something else. Allah says, مَا أُرِيدُ minhum." I do not want from them مِرْزْقٍ any provision. Allah does not need provision from us. Because sometimes we think Allah needs our worship. No, Allah doesn't need our worship. He was still Allah when we weren't there. Isn't it? He was ilah when there was no sign of us. And He will be ilah when we will be dead. Correct? Allah is not in need of our worship. We are in need of worshiping Him. Allah does not want any provision from us. وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَن يُطْعِمُونِي And I do not want that they should feed me. We weren't created to collect food and then give to Allah. Allah is not in need of us. Because you see, when we think about the relationship of a master and servant, usually, master is in need of his servant. Isn't it? Allah is not in need of his servants. Because in Allah, indeed Allah, huwa razzaq He is the continual, ultimate provider. ذُو الْقُوَّةِ الْمَتِينِ ذُو الْقُوَّةِ Possessor of strength. الْمَتِينُ The one who is strong and firm in his strength. Mateen from Mim ta noon means one who is firm in strength, whose strength never weakens, and nothing is difficult for him. So Allah is the provider. He is the firm possessor of strength. So the one who does not have rizq, who should he ask? Allah, the ultimate provider. فَإِنَّ لِلَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا فَإِنَّ So indeed, لِلَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا For those who have done zulm. What zulm? Whether it is of shirk or of denying the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. ذَنُوبًا They shall have a ذَنُوب. ذَنُوب means portion. ذَال نُون بَا and basically the word dhanub means dalu, a container, a bucket. A bucket that is used for drawing water out of a well. Alright? But then, you know, when water is taken out of the well in the bucket, then people transfer that water from the bucket to where? Their own containers. Alright? So each fill is what? Somebody's portion. Somebody's share. And from this, the word dhanub is used for nasib. Portion, share. So those who have wronged shall have a portion, a share, a share of what? Of punishment, mithla similar to the nubi ashabihim, the share of their companions, those who are like them, meaning their predecessors. Just like the people of Fir'aun, just like the people of Thamud, just like the people of Lut. فَلَا يَسْتَعْجِلُونَ So they should not be impatient. They should not impatiently urge me. They should not hasten. Because you see, the Prophet ﷺ, whenever he warned people about the hereafter, what would they say? When is it? Meaning, bring it already. 
Allah says, don't worry, it's coming. فَلَا يَسْتَعْجِلُونَ فَوَيْلٌ So woe, لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا For those who deny, مِنْ يَوْمِهِمْ From their day. Which day? الَّذِي يُعَدُونَ Which they have been promised. Or يُعَدُونَ from وَعِيد Meaning that which they have been warned about. So O Prophet wasallam, convey without concern for their denial, for they will be caught. And every one of us should have this fear. That sometimes the truth is obvious before us, clear to us. But if we ignore it, just like the people before us ignored it, then what are we expecting? فَوَيْلٌ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ يَوْمِهِمُ الَّذِي يُعَدُونَ There is a promised day that is coming, about which there is no doubt. So let us prepare for that day. سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمَّ بِحَمْدِكَ أَشْهَدُ وَلَّا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتَ أَسْتَغْفِرُكَ وَأَتُوبُ إِلَيْكَ السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته